It's Monday, April 7th, 2025, and we've got a big update for you on our upcoming weather. We've got some storms and rain in the southeast right now as a result of our never-ending system that we've been tracking here. That's also bringing some snow up into the northeast, and it's going to bring about a major pattern shift that we have to cover. But before we get too deep into the future, I think it's important here that we talk about the major severe weather outbreak sequence that we just experienced uh, from uh, March 30th through April 6th. We had an onslaught of severe weather weather across the uh, Mississippi Valley, back down into the Deep South, over into the Tennessee and Kentucky and Ohio Valleys, up into the Great Lakes region. We've had over 60 confirmed tornadoes so far, and some of those were really intense, like the ones in Lake City, Arkansas and uh, Selmer, Tennessee. An incredible 500 tornado warnings were issued over this stretch, and actually about 200 of those came just from April 2nd, which was the second most active severe weather day since April 27th, 2011. That big historic outbreak that we call the super outbreak. Perhaps even more widespread was the catastrophic flooding from the incredible amount of rainfall that we saw. Western Kentucky's got over 15 inches of rain, while parts of Arkansas and Tennessee received 8 to 12 inches or more. This is causing historic, life-threatening flash flooding and river flooding. Tragically, this devastating week has claimed the lives of approximately 20 people across several states uh, that we know of so far. There's still search and rescue going on. The flooding still going Going on. And of course, thousands of homes have been damaged or destroyed, and we've got people displaced out there. But thanks to y'all, the Y'all Squad is on the ground right now, already in a lot of these affected communities, delivering aid to people who need it most. Over the 60 plus hours that we spent on the air last week, we were able to raise about $140,000, and we've already been putting that to good use out there on the ground. So thank you for going over to the squad.org and helping us help people out there across all these different places that were affected. And we're going to be out there for a while. Uh, and if you want to follow along with our updates, uh, go follow the All Squad over there on X, Facebook, and YouTube. All right, let's dive straight into the forecast today, Monday, April 7th, which uh, it really is just going to take us down here to the south and east, where we've got a day one storm prediction center slight risk. That's a two out of five for severe thunderstorms. This covers parts of northern Florida, southeastern Georgia, up into the Carolinas, including places like Raleigh, uh, Tallahassee, and Savannah, up into Fayetteville, Columbia these places in South Carolina. There's also a marginal risk surrounding that area. Now, by the time this video goes live, this has probably already cleared the Atlanta region. It's already cleared most of the uh, panhandle of Florida, but I'd say by about 4 p.m. today, that's when it's going to be uh, at its max intensity over here in uh, South Carolina and Georgia. We're also going to see some of those storms work their way into northern portions of North Carolina up into Virginia, but most of the severe weather, I think, is going to be right here, right before the storms exit the country into the Atlanta. Atlantic Ocean. We probably are going to see some hail, a couple tornadoes today, uh, maybe even around Myrtle Beach by 8 p.m. But once we get into the uh, 9, 10 o'clock uh, time period, things are going to be mostly out to sea. We'll see some lingering storms out here in Florida. But uh, thank goodness, for the most part, the severe part of our major storm system here will be completely out of our hair uh, by 8 or 9 p.m. tonight. Along with the severe weather threat today, there's also a risk for excessive rainfall. We've got a two out of four kind of focused on the western portion of that larger marginal risk there. Most of this rain has already fallen, but the flash flood risk does expand all the way over into North Carolina, down into Florida, where we could expect an inch or two of rain on top of whatever you've already gotten. So be ready for some isolated flooding incidents. Now, the reason we're having severe weather in the southeast right now is because of a massive cold front that's coming through. And uh, if you look here at the current hazards from the National Weather Service, we've got a big freeze warning out from Texas all the way up in into Indiana, Ohio, Kentucky portions of West Virginia. That's going to probably get moved up farther northeast as well. And we have a couple of winter weather advisories right now up into portions of Maine and upstate New York. And we're about to dive much deeper into that. But first, we've got to thank today's awesome sponsor. Guys, there's so much conflicting information out there, and I've been searching high and low for a way to get the full story. I think we've really found it here with Ground News. Ground News organizes thousands of articles from across the world by story, making it super easy to see how different outlets cover the same events. Just yesterday, I was reading a pretty fascinating story about how Arctic currents are changing due to ice melting, and there were different sources, right? So I was really amazed to see that one scientific journal read this way. It was like, Antarctic current changes may alter global climate patterns. And then another mainstream media outlet had the title, Climate Crisis, Antarctic Ice Collapse Threatens Coastal Cities. You see what I'm saying? It's the same story, but... Uh, 
uh, one of them has a bias and it was very nice to see that laid out in front of me. I could compare, contrast, and all that kind of stuff. So we love ground news. As someone who really tries to get factual information out there to as many people as possible, I really appreciate what ground news is doing and I think that you guys are going to like them too. Right now, my viewers can get 40% off a Vantage plan on ground news. All you got to do is go to ground.news slash Ryan Hall or click the link in the top of the description. And once again, you're going to have the ability to get 40% off the Vantage plan. This is the exact same plan that I use every day. You can also scan this QR code here and that'll take you over to ground.news slash Ryan Hall. Go ahead and check it out. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. Ground.news slash Ryan Hall. Now let's get back into the video. If we look at the precipitation type forecast from the GFS here, you can see that we start off as rain for a lot of New England today with our storm system, but we actually do have some decent snow moving in. I think we're probably going to see some more winter storm watches be issued for a larger portion of New England up here in upstate New York. I think even Massachusetts, Vermont, New Hampshire, especially into Maine, you guys could experience some snow. Probably will be heaviest tomorrow around 2 p.m. as our system kind of exits off to the east. Snow will probably start to taper by early in the morning on Wednesday. This will bring us a widespread three to six inches of snow up here in Maine and some higher elevations over here in Vermont and New Hampshire could see over eight inches of snow. If you're in the valleys, this is going to be a skiff of snow at most, especially up here in a lot of New York. But there's a couple of places with some lake enhancement that might see over six inches of snow in New York. Pennsylvania, I don't see much snow happening down here. And there's a couple spots in Massachusetts that could see over two or three inches. But for the most part, this is a Maine and Canada deal. And it's, you know, a pretty moderate overall in terms of its uh, impact, but uh, it'll make travel somewhat difficult during the uh, peak of it there tomorrow. The big story here, in my opinion, is going to be the cold blast, man. We've got a major pattern shift happening here. The, the weather pattern is about to be very different thanks to this uh, cold front that's coming through. We're going to be settling in with some much cooler weather over here in the central United States, in the eastern portion of the United States as well. This starts today and goes all the way through at least Wednesday, where some places are going to feel significantly below average. We're talking about anywhere from 10 to 30 degrees below average, and that's going to feel more like February than April. We're going to be struggling to get out of the 30s and 40s up there, maybe even the 20s uh, in New England, and it's even going to feel much cooler than average in, in Florida. So we're not done with winter just yet. All right, looking even farther into the future after this system gets out of our hair, what happens next? Well, it does look like another little low pressure system is going to swing out of Canada here and kind of park itself over the eastern side of the United States. Even as we go into Friday, this is going to bring even more cool air down. And it's also going to kind of set up a channel of more significant rainfall over here along the East Coast. As you can see here, after we get done with the rainfall today, we're going to have a little bit of a break. Then we get some rain and snow forming in the Ohio Valley over there on Thursday. And that sends a couple different rounds, prolonged rounds of rain into the mid-Atlantic region up into the Northeast through the weekend. And for that reason, we have a marginal risk of excessive rainfall up here for the day five outlook in northern portions of the mid-Atlantic. In New England and parts of the Northeast, uh, this is right over New York City and surrounding areas. We expect to see maybe some flooding as a result of this. And while all that is happening over there on the East Coast, back West, again, uh, we are going to see a huge ridge form as a result of the persistent troughing in the East that's uh, responsible for the cooler than average weather. So we're going to be much above average in New Mexico. We're going to be above average in uh, Oklahoma, up into Nebraska. I mean, most of the central U.S. over into the Rockies are going to be much above average, at least through April 16th. On top of that, we're going to be below average with our precipitation for most of us. So that is good news for a lot of people. But over here in the uh, southwest, it's going to just continue to, uh, you know, cause problems with our ongoing drought. There is also the risk for some wildfires out here as the winds are not going to be calming down exceptionally. I mean, it's going to be less intense than what it has been. We're still going to have instances of uh, wildfire inducing weather all the way through April 16th. Temperatures look to stay above average for the vast majority of the lower 48 all the way through April 20th as well. And it looks like we might try to enter a more active pattern here, probably between April 14th and 20th with our storms from Texas up into the uh, Northeast and Ohio valleys. Again, for that reason, we're not expecting below average precipitation for that time period. This might be when severe weather returns. So for the most part though, between now and then, things look relatively quiet, all right? So let's enjoy this period because as we all know, it is now peak severe weather season and uh, we've got nowhere to go here but back to storminess. So take a break from worrying about the weather and uh, we'll let you know whenever things light back up again. And in the meantime, we're going to be working hard 
here uh, with the Y'all Squad to deliver aid to all these places that need help right now. Thank you once again for going over to the Y'allsquad.org and donating and helping to make that happen. And also, huge shout out to Ground News for sponsoring this video. And uh, make sure you subscribe to this channel, turn notifications on so you never miss a thing, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.